following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We are going to give today the lecture related with the three brains. In order to comprehend about these three brains, we have to explain about uh, the law of the three amatsi kamno, which is the law of three. This law Triya Matsi Kamno sounds very exotic. But it's related with the law uh, of three, of the, the three laws that related with creation. And uh, uh, we had to understand that any atom is a trio of matter, energy, and intelligence. This intelligence, we said, is a uh, consciousness. When we talk about matter and energy, in this day and age, there are many theories about matter. But uh, in reality, Matter is something abstract, unknown, because we, we, what we only see in this physical world is uh, form, forms of matter. Tree, a dog, a chair, a car, a person, all of those uh, are just forms of matter, but the matter itself, out of form, is something that uh, nobody can see, but exists. So when we talk about matter, really, it's something abstract, because we only see forms. As well as when we talk energy, we see only the energy in movement, or the action, phenomena related with energy. But the energy itself, without uh, action, not in movement, is something that also we cannot verify with the five senses. So we cannot see it. So as well, uh, the third aspect of this uh, trio that we said that any atom is, uh, is the intelligence. Also the scientists in this day and age, as are trying to find the intelligent design that created all of this complicated universe of matter and energy. But of course, we had also to state that that intelligence is also abstract. Because if matter and energy is abstract uh, concepts, Obviously, intelligence is also. But we cannot deny that uh, we are in the universe of matter, energy, and intelligence. The truth is that 
if any atom is a trio of matter, energy, and intelligence, obviously, if we are intelligent, it is because that intelligence resides within each one of us. And this is precisely what uh, we have to comprehend and understand when we go into this law of three. Because that intelligence is always active in any type of matter or energy, whether or in this galaxy or in any galaxy. There are laws, as we said in many other lectures, that control the universe. Inferior and superior laws. And when we point always at the tree of life, we find that every sphere or sephira of the tree of life is related with different laws. As well, in Klippath, every sphere of the infradimensions is related with different uh, intelligences, different laws. So, when we talk about laws, we are talking about intelligence. So, the Gnostic work is a way in which we are releasing ourselves from intelligences. Because we have to comprehend that when we talk in Gnosticism, we talk about that we have to control or not be identified with the mechanicity of nature. And that we are mechanical. But that we have to be intelligent in order to control that mechanicity. But when we say that, we are not denying that that mechanicity is intelligent. And this is something that we have to comprehend and understand about this topic that is related exclusively with the three brains. In nature, as you see in this physical world, we are submitted to 48 laws. And we always say that these 48 laws are related to the cell, the human cell, which has 48 chromosomes, 46 physical and two uh, bioelectric, we will say, to understand, related with the superior part of the physical body or the vitality of the physical body. So those laws work in our physical body. And not only in our physical body, but in all the bodies, in the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, all of this uh, nature is controlled by intelligences. And we have to comprehend and understand what is that intelligence. I said that every atom has that intelligence. But every element a plant, an animal, or a mineral, as you see, as a unit, is controlled by a, we will say, terminal, or an intelligence that controls all the intelligences of the atoms which are forming that cosmic unit. Let's put the example of a plant. A plant as you know, as many atoms in the synthesis, of course, because it's a cellular uh, organism, but in the end is atoms. And every atom has a, is, is intelligence. But all of those intelligence of that plant are controlled by one only unique intelligence that we call the monad, which is called that intelligence of the spirit, the elemental of the plant or what we can say, the spirit of the plant. And uh, likewise, all plants, animals, minerals have that particularity. 
but they do not have, as we said in other lectures, their own willpower or the freedom of acting independently, even though they are independent units, they are they act collectively, and uh, the intelligence that organize that or those intelligences, those monads, are of course intelligences that we find in other dimensions. Religions call these intelligences angels, divas, gods, and they are represented in different ways. And we can call them scientifically uh, intelligent design, it doesn't matter. In the end, they exist, because intelligence exists in the universe, in nature. So, nature is controlled by those intelligences. A good example, in order to understand the following, is this. Let's say that the intelligence of an architect, an engineer, is going to make a big dig, a big hole, in order to build a building. So he is digging and taking a lot of dirt in order to put the base, the foundation for that. Obviously, when somebody is seeing that and in the street, he said, oh, <coughs> somebody is going to build a huge building here and is digging there and suddenly they're going to put cement. So this is acting according to the laws of this society. But in that dirt, there is worms, insects, plants, that when they are taken out of their place, they said, what's going on here? Right? The intelligence of that, you know, we are being removed from our place. Do you think that the engineer or the architect cares about it? If you go and say, hey, do you talk to the worms, to the intelligences of the plants and all that life that is there in that area in order to you to do that? And then the engineer or the architect will say, to hell with your theories. Says, I'm doing this because I had to do it. And a superior law, which is my intelligence, is over that intelligence in case if it exists. So you see that, that that superior intelligence, which is in this case this engineer, is removing that, and the inferior intelligences which are there, which are mechanical, are of course slaves or victims of that. But of course, seeing that from the Gnostic point of view, we know very well that those uh, uh, type of matter and energy that are related with that digging, those living creatures will be born in a new matter with a new energy in order to continue their evolution, their development. So, of course, in the same way, in this nature, we find intelligences that are controlling the forces of nature. Of course, uh, present uh, society or the scientists, or in the colleges, universities, schools, they say, well, the ancient people believed that the elements were moved by the gods, and the gods were those intelligences that were related with those natural phenomena. When they say that, they are not lying. But because they cannot see those intelligences, they say, oh, the Greeks, the Romans, and all of those cultures that are talking about those gods in mythology invented with their imagination because they couldn't explain those natural phenomena. And of course, the truth is backwards. They knew because they saw it that those intelligences were performing those phenomena, as, as we say, 
the insects, the worms that are in that area where that engineer is commanding to dig, they don't see the engineer. They don't know what is going on. They only know that they are removed, right? But if you will go in contact in, in with those elements, what do they know about in engineering or about architecture? They don't know anything about that because they are not in the level of understanding what we are doing. In the same way, science or scientists of this day and age, they do not understand about the superior laws because they are in related with inferior laws. How are you going to comprehend those intelligences that are very high and over you and that are controlling the elements and the forces when you are not in that level? It's impossible. So they deny it, that those intelligences exist. As any worm can deny that the engineer exists. But does the engineer care about it? As well, those intelligences don't care. They, they just continue their function in nature. And this is precisely that people say, well, God pointing at only one being is unmerciful. A lot of people are being killed by earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes. Well, those are just intelligences that are being moved by superior intelligences, by superior uh, elements, in order to fix this planet. Because this planet, is, of course, is in agony, suffering. So this is precisely what we have to comprehend and understand when we are going into the intelligence. But to comprehend deeper, we have to go, for instance, in the different types of brains that give us that capacity. Because according to evolution, in the animal kingdom, we see the different brains of the creatures related with nature, with the environment. Let's put the example of a snail. When you see a snail on any leaf of any tree, eating that leaf, or living in that leaf, that snail, we say from our point of view, is a unidimensional creature. Even though, with our senses, we see that that snail has three dimensions. But that snail in itself, its intelligence has only one dimension. I mean, only perceives one dimension, which is called sensations. That is uh, obviously related <coughs> with that brain in relation with the sense of touch which any insect has. But in this case, the snail only lives in the world of sensations. And it only feels the leaf on which it lives and eats. That's it. The snail doesn't know that there's other leaves in the tree because it doesn't perceive it, even though they are there. If you take a uh, needle and you pinch that snail, it will shrink or, or with pain because the sensation is transmitted into its body, into its brain, which is only a brain of sensations. But there is another being, another creature called dog or cat that also is related with two brains. There's another brain that see representations of those sensations. If you pinch the paw of any dog, the dog will feel the pain and will look at you 
and look the needle that you are using it. So the dog obviously is perceiving that the representation of that needle that is causing that pain and will take out his paw. So you see there, animals with two brains in comparison with animals with one brain. So we will say then that even we see a cat, a dog, with three dimensions, because we are three-dimensional beings, even though that cat, that dog, only lives in two dimensions, which are sensations and representations. But according to the law of evolution, we have here, and we arrive at the level of a human being, a body with three brains. That's why we are called three centered or three brain individuals whose intelligence perceives nature and the universe through three brains. We receive sensations, we receive representations, and we conceptualize concepts, reasoning. So if somebody comes with the same needle and pinches in the hand, we see the representation of the person that is doing it, and then we say, why are you hurting me? What are your motives? Are you angry against me? I mean, we reason. You see, reasoning is precisely that brain, the intellectual brain, that gives us the capacity to be different from animals, which have only two brains, and from animals that have only one brain. That's why we are called intellectual animals. And it is because animal is a Latin word, or we will say a word that is rooted in Latin, anima. And that means soul. A soul that perceives. An intelligence that perceives. So here we have three brains. So we are the only creatures that can acquire individuality. We can acquire willpower in order to do what we want. According, of course, with the law. Because in this day and age, we find a lot of individuals that do what they want. But that is called blind will, or self-willed, in which the individual is not attuned with the laws of nature. You see, that's precisely the, uh, the difference. When you see a snail, when you see a cat, when you see a dog, those individuals, those creatures, do their will in collect, uh, collectively. But they are obeying the laws of nature because the superior intelligences guide them very well in order to know what's going on. Like, for instance, the case in the tsunami that happened there in Asia. All the animals knew what was going to happen because the superior intelligence were in harmony with their intelligence of their bodies. So they run up, the tsunami came, and only those animals with three brains that were not in harmony with the superior laws were victim of the tsunami because they were doing their own whim, their own will. And this is precisely the mistake, the, the error in which we are. So when we have three brains, we are the only creatures that have the opportunity of developing self-will. It's coming into my mind <coughs> related with the Hebrew mythology, the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament, that says, glory to God in the highest and peace to man with good will on the earth. So peace is harmony 
But people think that when the Bible says peace to men with good will on the earth, they think that there are people that have good will that go and, and give to the poor or that uh, help uh, the needed, which is, of course, good. I'm not saying that it's bad. But good will is, we will say, glory to God in the highest and peace to those creatures that have developed the body of willpower on the earth, which is Tifereth which is precisely the goal of any cosmic unit to become independent. Well, as the Bible says, to know good and evil, like the Elohim, like the gods. So with three brains, we have the opportunity. Because the human body is a machine with three nervous systems, or three brains. We call the brain, the intellectual brain, related with a, a cerebrum spinal nervous system and then we say that the emotional brain is related with the grand sympathetic nervous system and the motor instinctual sexual brain with the parasympathetic nervous system physically we see that these three brains are developed and related independently. The intellectual in the head, the emotional between the heart and the navel, and the motor in all the spinal column. There's a motor brain. So those forces related with the law of creation with the Holy Triyamatsikano, which in Christianity will say it is just the Holy Trinity or the Trimurti of the Hindus. The three ways in which we see how the three intelligences of the universe organize any cosmic unit, any element. But let's see and continue in our lecture how we are constituted even though we have three brains it doesn't mean that we are in control of those three brains because they are intelligences obviously we have different systems in our physical organism in our machine we have the digestive system and we know that when we eat the stomach will digest the food and the rest. But are we interfering with that? Are we conscious of that? We are not. We have the circulatory system in which the heart of course is, the, uh, is performing a, a great job transforming the impure blood into pure blood in connection with the respiratory system with the oxygen that we breathe. It's marvelous. But do we have any uh, intellig uh, conscious activity of that? Do we know that? We know it, but we are not conscious of that. And likewise, we have different systems, organs in our human body that perform a marvelous job in order for, for us to be physically alive. And we are submitted to loss. The 48 laws of this physical world. And when we are in nature, we know that this nature is submitted to laws as well. But we are not conscious of that. And we don't control that. Even though we do the effort. Medical science are trying to control the different diseases, sicknesses of the physical body. Inventing drugs, etc. in order to cure this, to cure that. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes not. New sicknesses, and we are victims of that. So obviously, we are not in control of our bodies. And if we are not in control of our physical bodies, if we say that we are in control of our mind, of our psyche, of our spirit, it will be a joke. Because first we had to control the matter, 
the, the lowest part of our cell, which is the physical body. To be conscious of it. And that's precisely the first step in the Gnostic doctrine. To be conscious of our physical life. When people enter into this knowledge, they start identifying themselves with the astral plane, with the mental plane, with the causal plane, and with the other planes. But they forget that the physical plane is the first that we have to control. And in order to control this physical body, we have to understand that there is intelligences in this body. Because every atom is a trio of matter, energy, and intelligence. So there is intelligence in the uh, digestive system, there is intelligence in the cir circulatory system, there is intelligence in all the systems, organs of our physical body. To awake is to be aware of it and to start awakening physically. That's why it is written, in patience you will possess your souls. This is a saying of the Master Jesus of Nazareth. Soul is intelligence, it's consciousness. Impatience means there is a job that takes time. A work, a psychological work that we have to perform in ourselves in order to possess the soul. To possess the soul, you see that? What is that? To possess the soul is to control the intelligence. But that is not going to happen in one week, one month, or one year. It's a process of being aware of oneself. Because in order for this physical body to exist, it needs an intelligence. And that intelligence is the monad, which are our spirit, which is controlling all of the atoms, intelligent atoms in our organism, according to loss. But if we investigate any one of us, we see that the intelligences that are in the atoms of all our organism is being controlled by other lusts, not by ourselves, other superior lusts. And that's why we said that they are mechanical, mechanical in the sense that we are not controlling them, but that they control us. That's why Jesus says, in patience you have to control your soul, or you have to possess your souls. Because the soul is possessing us. In other words, the intelligences of nature are possessing us, controlling us. And, and, and unfortunately, because of our ignorance, we are creating a lot of elements we we call psychological aggregates you see psychological aggregates meaning which are elements which are added to our intelligence which are not intelligent which are not acting in accordance with the laws and the laws are controlling those elements in order to be in tone in tune with the laws and those elements are called egos Defects, biases, nerves that we have within, that the superior laws are uh, trying to balance to, through the law of balance, which is the law of karma, and that's why we suffer. Because we, we do not possess, we, we do not control those intelligences. And that's the job precisely in our work, to control that. And that's a symbol that is written very clear in mythology. Greek mythology explains about Pluto, or Hades, which is the king of hell. This hell, this Averno of the Greeks, is nothing more than the subconsciousness, unconsciousness of all of that intelligence of our body, which act without our intervention, mechanically. But what is intelligent? I repeat, when I said mechanical, it doesn't mean that it's not intelligent. It's intelligence, but it's not our intelligence. Hmm? Because we are not in control of it. So there, here, you find uh, Orpheus, which goes, says, I'm going to go down and to take my out and, and, and to become free. 
The consciousness in this case is called Euridice. And there are many uh, operas about that, and many books that talk about how Orpheus goes into hell in order to take Euridice from it, because he's the consciousness. With the help, of course, of the forces. And the gods allow him to go inside hell. But of course, he doesn't succeed. And at the end, he succeeds in different ways. The same thing happened with us. That Pluto, that Hades, or in this case, we will say, in Christian ways, of the Old, or the Old Testament. That Pharaoh controls the Israelites. But Moses wants to free the Israelites from that Pharaoh and that tyranny, which controls the inferior laws. So that intelligence is mechanical, but intelligent. So we have to control it, and in order to control it, you see the fight that Moses has against the Pharaoh, or that Orpheus has against Hades. This is a battle, internal battle, that we have to perform. And only is possible with three brains. Because it's through the three brains that we are going to do it. Because only a creature with three brains has the ability of controlling the three primary forces of the universe. That Christianity called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That Hinduism called Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. And that in Kabbalah we call Keter, Chokmah, Bina. Like Mayans call Huracan, Tepeu, and Gukumats. And what the Aztecs call uh, Ometekutli, Quetzalcoatl, and Tlaloc, Odin, Baldur, and Thor in the Nordic mythology. So we find in different religions, different names, of course, because they speak different languages, in relation with the same thing. And how these three primary forces can uh, uh, help any individual in order to develop and to control his own physical body, his own intelligence. And that's why the first step in this Gnostic work is to observe our three brains. Because the inner intelligence of our being acts according to the law through the three brains. It's how the three brains, how we are accomplishing our own particular individual karma. And this is how, our, our, through our three brains, how we receive the help of the superior less. Because the superior beings wants to help us in order for us to be responsible elements. But they know that in order for us to acquire that responsibility, we have to work in ourselves. Again, here, the word responsibility is something that we have to understand. Responsibility means the ability to respond with intelligence. Because there are a lot of people that respond, but not with intelligence. Right? To respond with intelligence is to be aware of ourselves. If somebody insults you and you answer with another insult, you are not responsible of yourself. You are manipulated by certain aggregate. And then you are making a hell of your life. But if you control that, means you are being responsible of your own self. And that inquires and that is a necessity of tremendous willpower. Because it's precisely what the other creatures don't have. Animals don't have willpower, but collective. We want to be individuals. We want to exercise that ability of developing that willpower. But that willpower could be dual. If we exercise willpower in a very selfish way, then a demon is being developed in which you exercise your will through anger, through pride, to vanity, to laziness, to lust, etc. And that's a demon. 
because all of those elements that we named are against the laws. They're breaking the laws. That's why they are called sins or errors, defects. So in order for us to exercise a, a, a true response, cosmic, universal responsibility, we have to, to tune our intelligence with our own particular individual God, with our own being. And it's through the three brains that we are going to do it. Because our inner being acts through the three brains. If we are remembering him or it. If we are from second to second remembering and observing the three brains. This is how we discover that any particular activity of our intelligence is always related with the three brains. Whether this intelligence is trapped within the ego or free from ego. That's why we say in Gnosticism that every single psychological aggregate is intelligence trapped with an error and that acts through the three brains because life as it is enters into our psyche, our intelligence through the senses but immediately it uh, uh, targets any of the three brains and this is precisely why we have to be always aware of ourselves during daily life and going to see the different events events of life to see which brain is targeting because you cannot deny that I events related with the intellectual brain other events related with the emotional brain and other events related with the motor instinctual sexual brain right now for instance I am using my intellectual brain in order to communicate this knowledge to you you are sitting there and taking it with your intellectual brain but we have to do the effort to remember God in order for that information to go directly into the consciousness not taken mechanically because if we don't do it if we receive it mechanically it's going to storage or to be stored I mean only in the personality in a Gnostic personality anyone can develop so by observing ourselves our three brains is how we discover what type of individuals we are even though some people say that according to uh, the lecture of the seven personalities we said that they are intellectual personalities emotional personalities and motor instinctual personalities that they are centered in any of these of those three brains but we have to comprehend that even though we are centered specifically in one brain doesn't mean that we the other three uh, two brains do, do, do not act or we don't act our intelligence do, do not act through that and for that we have to comprehend and to understand the five centers because when we always talk about the motor brain we always say motor instinctual sexual brain why we say that because in reality we have five cylinders five cylinders or five centers which are related with these three brains the intellectual cylinder or center in the intellectual center the emotional center located precisely in the solar plex the motor center which is located at the very top of the spinal column the instinctual center which is located in the coccyx the very base of our spinal column 
and the sexual center, which is in our genitals. So these five centers are precisely uh, those centers that are also we got to study. But these uh, uh, five centers always act through the three brains, because we are three centered beings. We always say that we have seven centers. There's the superior emotional center and the superior intellectual center. But those two centers are superior, are not related with the ego, only with the being. That's why we always omit those. Because they are always related with certain developments that we have to do or to perform. But if you observe every single center or cylinder, you will see that it's divided in three. It's intellectual part related with the intellectual brain. It's emotional part related with the emotional brain. And it's motor part related with the motor brain. So if we are intellectuals, if we are centered in the intellectual center, obviously we have emotional intellectual activities and motor intellectual activities. Let's see somebody, a writer. A writer is an intellectual person. <coughs> Obviously, when he's writing, he's in, uh, using his intellect and his motor center. And if he observes his heart, we feel some emotions. But those emotions are related with the intellectual brain. As well, we find people that are very emotional, like actors. An actor is an emotional person, but obviously, in order to act, he has to memorize all what he has to say in a certain scene in a, in a movie or in a theater. And that, of course, is using the intellectual brain from his emotional center. When he's acting, he's using it. And the motor activity. And now let's see, for instance, the motor center. When you are dancing, you have to utilize your intellectual part of your, of your motor center and the emotional part of your motor center because you are moving. The, the, the main center that is in activity there is the motor center. But according to how you are inspired with the music, you move. So you see, now let us put it as a person that is instinctual, like a, 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 a boxer or a karate person, when he is using the instinctual center. He's using obviously the, the brain part of that instinctual center, the emotional part of that instinctual center, and the movement, which is very fast. But we say that every center is faster than other. The slowest of all of them is the intellectual center. And the sexual center is the fastest of all of them. Related with the motor, related with the intellect, and related with the brain of emotions. So obviously, we are creatures moved by cylinders, five cylinders, and three brains. Related with it. But we are not aware of it. And that's precisely the work <coughs> that we have to perform in this Gnostic uh, practical work. And this is how we start developing willpower. Because in order for us to take control of the three brains and the five centers, the intelligence which is our consciousness, in order to possess our souls, we have to exercise willpower. It's, it's impossible to do it without willpower. And that's why the Master Samael Onveor advises that the main thing or source of willpower that can help us in that work is the sexual energy. But also, he advises that we have to save not only the sexual energy, but also the emotional energy, and also the mental energy. But the main thing is 
the foundation, which is the sex, by transmuting the sexual energy, our consciousness receives a shock and increases willpower. Can you see? In different books of the Master Samael and Veor, we, we hear about electronic bodies or solar bodies or soul bodies. And that's precisely intelligence. If we create an astral body, we have a body that exercises power, control of the 24 laws. Mental body is a body that exercises control of six laws. I mean, uh, 12 laws. And then the causal body that exercises power over six laws. So our bodies that we had to build in order to be in control of different laws of this universe. But first, we have to control this physical body that is related with 48 laws. And that's to possess soul. That's why the Master says that even the physical body has to become soul. And that means that you have with willpower to control your physical body, your three brains. It's impossible to, to comprehend or to say that somebody has power of his physical body and is not controlling their three brains. That is victim of his emotions, and is victim of his mind, of his in instincts, habits, customs. Obviously, if you observe your life, you will see that we are not in control of our life. In the contrary, life controls us in different ways. Karma is called elements or circumstances that we created and that control us. The problem with, uh, with us is that we want to control others. And that is what we call black magic. We will say, oh, well, but I am not a black magician. I am a student that is trying to develop in Gnosis good things. But if you observe yourself, really, you will see that you are 97% black. Sometimes you exercise black magic, which is precisely the activity of willpower in order to control others. That's simple but it's black magic, all trying to control all the laws of nature and the cosmos with your own particular selfishness, without taking into account others. You want you have to do your will. And that's why an example of this great law that we are talking here is synthesized. In that prayer of the Lord, when he is in the Mount of the Olives, kneel and ready to receive his own karma, or to wash the karma of the world, whatever. Jesus is nailed there and he sees clairvoyantly and sees very well what is coming. The cross, the crucifixion, whatever. And he can avoid it because he has the power to avoid it. He can do it with his own will. Why not? He has already developed but he remembers his God and says, well, the superior laws here <coughs> that have to be controlled inferior laws. If I do my will, maybe I will commit a mistake. But my God knows more than me always. So, Father, if it's possible, take this cup of bitterness from me. But not my will, but thine be done. And then he says, I'm ready. Because his father is going to take care of his will, you see? Not my will, but done be done. That is a harmony of my will with the will of God. And of course, the will of God knows more. It's a lot of things that are being played there. And if you are blind, you don't know, you can commit a mistake. And then you go, according to that, and you allow yourself to be moved by the forces of your being. 
And sometimes those forces of your being that is moving you from here, from there, contradict people in the earth. Because we are submitted, uh, uh, unfortunately, in our psychological aggregates to self-will. The will of religions, the will of the government, the will of this or that, because we have a lot of laws here that are not related with what we are talking. You see, that's an example of a law that we cannot control. <laughs> Well, for those that are not seeing here, uh, 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 a door open automatically and smack the face of one of our <laughs> listeners. Karma. Uh, that's karma. No, that's just love accidents. Uh, simple love accidents. So unfortunately, we are submitted to love accidents too. But what's what we call love accidents, right? Forces that are being moved. Things that are being done, and unfortunately, during those karmic forces that are being done, are accidents happening. Mm -hmm. So, the law of karma sometimes are related with the law of accidents, and you know, we are submitted to those laws. But we have to possess our souls, we have to control our intelligence, we have to observe ourselves. Nobody can do it for us, but only ourselves. That's why Jesus says, in patience, you will possess your souls. Don't come here and tell me, oh no, Jesus died 2,000 years ago, so now he's going to possess my soul just because I believe in him. He didn't say that. He says, you will possess your souls in your patience if you do the work. But he didn't say, I'm going to possess your souls with my patience, so don't do anything. Just relax. He didn't say that. Right? Because it's a personal work that we have to do. Of course. He can help us. I remember precisely one of these moments, uh, something that happened in Mexico. The Master Samael was giving a lecture related with meditation, related with the analysis of the ego. And then he finishes and says, well, let us now enter into meditation after we explain this. And then one of the students says, and, uh, Right his arm and says, Master, please, can you help me to uh, do my comprehension? And I says, well, says the Master, the only help that I can give you is this explanation. But to comprehend your ego is your business. I cannot comprehend your ego. And if I comprehend your ego, it's my intelligence that is doing it. So it's good for me, but not for you. The three Amatsikamno, the three primary forces of the universe and the cosmos, wants to create in each one of us a creature capable of being aware of all the intelligences of the universe. So when you study the tree of life, you see, of course, that every world or every sephira is ready with different laws, as we said in the beginning. When somebody acquires the control of the whole intelligence of himself, which is related with the universe, that individual receives the title of Paramartha Satya. Para is a Sanskrit word which means absolute. Martha, intelligence, consciousness, and also in Christianity is called humility, humbleness. And if you reflect in that, you will see how really Martha is related with that. The individual which is in tone with the universe, in tune, right? Martha, completely awakened, is humble. When you talk with the Master Jesus, 
His humbleness is natural. But he, because he's aware and he's not pride there. He's a satya. Paramartha satya. An individual which is completely awakened. And that is aware of his own intelligence and the intelligence of the universe. Not only of this planet, but the solar system, the galaxy, the galaxies. Not only of this infinite, but many infinites. In order to have the right to go into the bosom of the abstract, absolute, as a paramartha satya. A being which is completely in charge of himself. And for, and for, for that, he reflects. He reflects. The universe, the infinite, in himself, completely in harmony. That's a, a, a title that Master Jesus has, Paramartha Satya. <clears throat> but what, what, are, what we are? Are we in control of the physical body? Do we control our three brains, our five centers? No, that's why we are here. We have to control it. And there's a process of patience. It is precisely what the Gnostic has to develop. Patience. Because it's, an, it's not an intellectual or mental process. It's an intelligent process which is related with the consciousness. Remember that intelligence has nothing to do with the mind. The mind is only an element that the intelligence uses. In order to do what it has to do. It's an instrument. Fortunately, we are so identified with the mind and with those mental elements that act through our three brains. Because they are, of course, trying to follow the mechanicity of the loss of the only in other intelligent forces that, that are controlling us. A being that controls the last, whose intelligence take over the three brains, control the law of the three Amatsi Kamno, the Holy Trinity, the law of three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in harmony. And therefore, is a God. What is a God? What do you call a God? A being that manages the intelligences of all the parallel universes, of all the spheres of the universe. That is, a, that, that is a God, which is in harmony with the forces. Well, you can call it an angel if you want, or diva, it doesn't matter. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,